The Week in Bible Prophecy, a Prophecy Watchers podcast. Welcome to the podcast today, everybody. I'm here with Terry James. Uh, Terry James and Pete Garcia wrote a new book called The New World Order, Worlds in Collision and the Rebirth of Liberty. And this is a great book that we're going to discuss some of the topics in it. Terry, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm honored nice to be with you. Yeah, it's good. And uh, Pete is is off uh, working, actually, and yeah, so he's not yeah. able to be here, which is kind of a bummer. It is. And he, I like to say that Pete wrote a great deal of this book, most of it, and uh, a lot of it was his idea. And and I thank him so much. He did a tremendous job, as did you with the forward. Yeah, you know what? I, I really appreciate you asking me to do the forward on this, because uh, as I looked at some of the initial thoughts and the manuscript, I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely, uh, participating in what you're doing. Because we, as we, we're, we're kind of living, Terry, in the the new world implementation uh, stage, yeah. uh, which I, I definitely want to talk about. But before we do, let's kind of set the stage from a foundational level, which is kind of what I did in the forward, that uh, the first thing I say in the book, or at least in my forward is, quote, you're a conspiracy theorist, and we know that that's kind of been a pejorative term over the past. But let's talk about that. As a biblical Christian, uh, is it right, and should we embrace the phrase uh, being a conspiracy person or conspiracy theorist? Well, uh, myself, I, I would argue that uh, what, I, what I believe and what I think is based on uh, the Bible God cannot lie. It's his word, and therefore it's not a conspiracy. But I realize that the world's going to call a lot of it a conspiracy because uh, they're um, the antithesis of everything God uh, uh, recommends. And so I can't, I can't help what they call me, a conspiracy theorist. Uh, and if they want to call me that, that's what I am, uh, then, uh, then I'm still going to put forth what I believe God's word says, particularly in Bible prophecy. And um, and if they want to uh, deny that, well, uh, uh, there again, I <laughs> anyway that that's the way I deal with conspiracy. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, you know, I, to me, it's, it's like, well, of course, I'm a conspiracy guy, aren't you? I mean, the, the the if we look at the definition of conspiracy, it's it's the the it's two or more people uh, plotting together for some sort of most mostly nefarious idea, and mm-hmm. so when we look at at, at Satan as the master conspirator, that that's kind of the way I start at least the forward is, hey guys, of course we believe in conspiracy because we believe in Satan. If you deny Satan, what's Satan's goal? Well, from the beginning, uh, we're introduced to him in Genesis 3. We show up on the scene and there he is. And and he's conspiring uh, and, and he against God for sure, nefariously, but also he, he looks to recruit humanity. And so he shows up in the garden Seeking to uh, to cause trouble, yeah, and and is um, antagonistic to his uh, desires. You and I are conspiracists, uh, um, Mondo, because we both are conspiring together to adhere to what God's word says to bring people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is the answer to sin. So, in that sense, yeah, we're conspiring together. We're conspiracists, conspiracists in the good way. In a good way, yeah, 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 and and, and l- l- so. Let's go back and kind of um, revisit for, for I, I just like to encourage people, hey, guys, um, when oftentimes when labels are thrown out, you know, um, you know, you're you're a conservative, you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, you're a liberal, wh- whatever those labels are, oftentimes they're meant to uh, to neutralize people. And so if people want to throw that at us, I'm like, absolutely, I embrace it now. Let's talk about it. It, it. We believe in a conspiracy that's that originated with Satan, who is working behind the scenes against God, and, and he's seeking to establish his own, which we'll get to, uh, his own order, his own order of things. But uh, when we think about what he's doing, um, let's talk about who else is involved spiritually and even from a human level in his kingdom. In, in God's kingdom? No, in, in Satan's kingdom. Oh. I mean, he's not doing this alone, right? Oh, no, he's got no, no. other well, helpers. Like, like, like we've talked about before, um, I think that, uh, you know, um, Ephesians six twelve pretty much has it uh, down. Uh, we struggle not against uh, the flesh and blood, against principalities and powers, against, uh, you know, evil in high places, wickedness in high places, and so forth. And yeah, I, I again believe that he has um, Satan has uh, both his demonic uh, and supernatural minions at work, as they have been since the fall, and since being kicked out of heaven. 
and then he has uh, the human minions that working under them, working under them, in which they're they're tempted and even indwelt. I think in some cases, and uh, so uh, yeah, uh, the world is full of of, uh, of Satan's uh, uh, minions, both human and, and demonic. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think. Uh there's no doubt as we look at, at history, uh, there are those that hate God and who are willing participants in, in Satan's agenda to, to establish his kingdom apart from God. But there's also, let's talk about the other angle too. There's those that, are, that surprisingly would be willing to join Satan and sell their soul for riches or for wealth or, or, you know, or, or sensual pleasures, whatever the fame, whatever those temptations that Satan offers. Uh, but we also have those that are deceived. I mean, we know from First Timothy chapter 2 that Eve was deceived into taking the mm -hmm. fruit, right? Because she looked at it and she's like, oh, wow, it looks pleasing. And I could be like one of the gods if I do this. Oh, this is awesome. And so he deceives her uh, with a temptation that she accepts. Uh, you know, Adam did it willingly. But let's talk about the others that, that maybe they mean well in trying to establish a global order. Maybe, maybe. But they've been deceived into his methods and to his philosophy. Well, I think they all, they all um, most of them may begin by thinking they're doing God's service, you know, God's work by doing this. But what the human mind does because it's fallen and it's getting farther away from God, as we see through the issues and events of the day, uh, just uh, amazing the things we see. Uh, the direction we see things going away from God, and and I think within, even within our government we see that it's um, that we have reprobate minds running things right now in this government, in this world, and um, not only in this United States but in other places too, and and so yeah, the, the, that's uh, that's. Uh, that's the way it's headed. Yeah, when we look at the, uh, and this is what what you guys do in the book, which is so good, uh, you establish the theological foundation uh, of of if we want to understand the future, then we look at the past, right? You know, and and we see that that philosophy, which is good. You know, those that don't understand history will, will are doomed to repeat it and all the other things. But when we look at Satan's uh, mo in the Bible, he's recruiting not only the spiritual hosts, uh, leading a rebellion there. He's recruiting humans to participate in it. And we see historically, whether it's the garden, whether it is uh, Cain and Abel, maybe the Tower of Babel for sure. And then we come uh, into the nation of Israel and how he's recruiting uh, the, the kings that to, to worship other gods, mm -hmm. always in opposition to worshiping and being loyal to the true God. That's because of the fallen nature of mankind. It, it, the tendency is to pull away from God. That's where the, the break, and that's why man has to be reconciled, and only Jesus Christ can do that, and God, only God's way can do that. And um, until that happens, it's going to continue going in the opposite direction, at which time, uh, ultimately, God's wrath and judgment are going to fall on mankind. And I believe we see some, not maybe not the full wrath or full judgment, but we certainly have seen numerous warnings, I believe, from God, just in, in our era, in, in, this, in the, what we call the modernistic era, maybe. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when we think about, uh, you know, uh, Ezekiel 28 in talking to the power behind uh, the king of Tyre. Uh, it's clearly a reference to Satan, uh, I think. And, and it says that he's God speaking, that he was perfect in wisdom. And so Satan, he has to look at God, the creator, the uncreated being, the uncreated creator, all powerful, and and yet knows that that he can't uncreate God. So God's never going to be destroyed in the sense of uh, ontologically. But what does, what does Satan want? Do you think that Satan is just looking to create a, 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 co a concurrent kingdom on his own where he's being worshipped, and yet it's like, yeah, whatever, if you guys want to go over there, worship Yahweh, fine. But I want my own kingdom. I want to be worshipped to operate concurrently, knowing that he can never get rid of God fully, but yet... What, 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 what's he after here? Well, I'm glad to say that I can't fully comprehend <laughs> Satan's mind for sure, and any more than I can create, I can um, uh, understand the, the God's mind all, totally. It always, you know, as we've talked about before, maybe, um, I, I don't see how Satan, who knows God perfectly, I mean, he was his most, I guess, you, his greatest created being in the angelic world. Uh, that's the way that it's portrayed. 
and yet he fell into sin. What is this thing called iniquity? Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a finite uh, concept. I don't understand. You know, infinite mind can't get around that. And why does Satan, who knows this, uh, why why does he still think he's going to prevail? And is doing everything he can, but and then he can look at what God's prophetic words say, and he doesn't seem to be able to get out of that track of following exactly what Bible prophecy says is going to happen and, and will happen, and um, and yet uh, he, he still thinks he's going to prevail. Well, to me, I, I, that's uh, that's the ultimate reprobate mind of uh, Romans one twenty eight. I think Satan has come down to that, and all who follow him uh, uh, will eventually come to that total reprobate anti God thing and um, and I think we see that happening right now particularly uh, leadership in this country and other countries and much of the people who follow those leaderships yeah I, I think it's amazing too again and the guys did a great job in the book is if we look at the way that Satan has worked in the past in trying to establish his new world order and then we can transition you know into talking about what what we see in our current events is I look and it, I just go back to Matthew 4 that what does Satan want? Well, the ultimate thing we know when he when he's talking to Jesus, he he tells Jesus, this mm -hmm. is what I want. I want if you uh, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I, they're mine to give all the wealth, the glory, the fame, all of it. Um, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I will give all this to you. And so that's what he wants. He wants Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, uh, to grant glory to him in, in worship mm -hmm. and in service. And so as we look into our current situation, as we're approaching the end of the age, we know at the end, uh, in Revelation 13, that, that everybody's worshiping the dragon. So it's almost as if the New World Order, the globalism, global government, um, all of that, what that entails, is set to put Satan at the top and we know that the whole world worships him. And so it's almost as if the New World Order is just a means to the end of him being worshipped. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, and I think, and that's what he wants. Uh, that we see that in chapter 13 of Revelation, where he, he, you know, he indwells, I believe, the, um, the Antichrist, is the son of perdition, and uh, Satan's man. He actually indwells him, I believe, when he is thrown out of heaven, uh, I believe it happens, uh, in chapter 12 of Revelation. And uh, he actually indwells, and, and, and Satan in that way does get his um, moment of glory, I guess, because he, he, he demands worship, but the second he does, well, Jesus said that, uh, that initiates the worst time in all of, mm -hmm. all of human history. And uh, so God is going to make a statement right then of, when, of, 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 of what he thinks of um, the earth dwellers, as, uh, as it is put in the Bible. So, um, yeah, Satan, Satan does want to be worshipped, and uh, again— can explain knowing God as he knows God that he cannot be defeated and he's perfect in every way. Why he did that, I don't know. Where, where does iniquity come from? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, as far as I, I've had some of it in my past, my own past. <laughs> yeah, we are certainly. Th Thankfully, I'm saved from that. But. We've had enough to be humble. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And but yet, it's interesting that God says in in that Ezekiel 28 that you were perfect until iniqu iniquity was found in you. Mm -hmm. And we know First Timothy three and other passages that he fell through pride. He's you know he's he spends too much too much time looking in the mirror uh, of how beautiful he was, or maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contemplating how wise he was and that that's that uh, and, and you know that's why god says he that that's the number one thing he lists on his list of seven things he hates <laughs> exactly. is pride yeah and what what do we have right now uh what do we have right now we have we have something called worldwide pride they won't call it gay now i don't guess because they don't want to they don't want to uh, make those who want to be proud uh think that they are also part of the lbtq stuff and all that stuff but but this gay pride thing uh, in my opinion, God is not going to let this go unpunished. No, no, no. There's no doubt, and, and I think it's also the other aspect of it is there, there's there's a sadness I think on on uh, in God's heart, and certainly should be in, in ours as we watch this. I mean, there there is some certainly some uh, some frustration or, or, or righteous indignation against the the willful behavior and rebellion. But on the other hand, is you think. Uh, it saddens me for those that are confused because mm -hmm. they should not hate them, you know. We yeah, exactly. Yeah. We love them, and and, yeah. and I think God is saddened that that they've embraced the lie, they've embraced the deception. Satan's the great deceiver. Uh, they've embraced the confusion, uh, and to me, it's like oh, and, and well, the great thing as well is when you think about the two kingdoms, as you mentioned, 
you know, Satan's kingdom. Yeah, he's worshiping, but at the end, he's a tyrant. Yep, and so God is going to stop it because he knows that he loves mankind. He created mm-hmm. mankind in his mm-hmm. image. And it's not good for mankind to be sucked into that tyrannical global government, even worshiping Satan, because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we see how that's going to happen in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You know, the, the grand delusion, we see how easy that's going to be. We see just from recent past uh, um, history and, and issues and events of our time that how easily people are... are pulled into these lies and so forth. And so the the grand delusion when it takes place, the great delusion of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, we can see where they're going to embrace the lie even more. And um, it, it's very sad. And only the only answer to that is um, is prayer and witness, I think. Yeah, no doubt. And I think as, as Christians, uh, you know, it, it's right to be holy. I mean, the, the Bible tells us, be holy for I am holy. But on the other hand, sometimes all of us can become smug and and looking down and and to be condescending on those that are not believers, those that are willing participants, and and uh, and, and pray for vengeance. I, I mean, I, I, that's not my heart at all. I, I think we do know that these these behaviors sadden the Lord, and and God is not God's not eager. He's slow to anger. He's not quick to punish. Um, he will, and he does. But uh, God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Right? We have all these. I think oftentimes we we, we leave those out as Christians in general out of the equation that, uh, as you said, prayer and, and compassion for the confusion and the lostness uh, of many people. And that's not just the, 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 the gender confusion and all that, but just in general for those that have embraced yeah, by, a lost lifestyle. But, you know, the old saying, by the grace of God, there go we, you know, but by the grace of God, uh, you know, and his forgiveness. Uh, so we certainly must must uh, follow uh, God's will and, and, and witness to the saving power of Christ, because that's the only thing that's going to change the world. Yeah, it's so true. And I think, you know, we, and I'm including myself in here in, in the sense of we say, oh, you know, there, there go I, but by the grace of God. But oftentimes we we, we forget or we, we say it. It's a cliche, no, we but we really don't really believe it, it yeah. you know, sometimes. is Well, I think the older I get, I do believe it. Uh, right. <laughs> That's what I say. There was a time I, I said it but didn't really embrace yeah, it. But as I, I get older. I mean it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean sure. it because we have a uh, – as we get older, we have more failures to go, oh, well, yeah. Lord, I'm so sorry. Why did I do that? And, and oh. how, how, what he has done for us and what he does for us as his children. I mean, I mean, he he's taken my life and he's just, uh, you know, he has focused me on certain things. And he's had to be pretty draconian, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he has been it, for but, me. But he has, and, and, and I'm th- I thank him every morning for it. Yep. I, I do. I thank him every morning uh, for having – let me go through what I went through so that he could focus me on what he wants me to do. Yeah, kingdom work. And I'm not, I'm not being proud or boastful about that. I sincerely mean it. Yeah, no, the, 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 exactly. The Lord knows I'm thankful, too, for the, the, the discipline and the, and the grinder that he's allowed us to go through at times. And, you know, as we think about to the end of the age here, um, we have, again, the th- you guys did it in the book, the Theological Foundation. So, you know, right now, here we are, 2023, you know, let's say Terry – an unbeliever comes to you, maybe, maybe a skeptic, and they come and say, oh, you know, you're, you're a conspiracy guy. You say, yeah. And you go, you believe in a new world or you know, give me some evidence. What evidence is there, Terry, for the new world order right now? I mean, really, w- w- give me, point me to something. The World Economic Forum, the, um, just all of these organizations that are doing their dead level best to bring America down, for example, mm-hmm. trying to get America, for example, to, uh, to come, the people of America, to come into uh, into their way of one world, do away with nationalism, sovereignty, tear down the borders. They want they want all, all of this. It's, it's a drive, much like Nimrod, uh, you know, to make all people come together. And of course, they're coming together, and they don't realize it. They're coming together for Satan's purposes. That's what he wants. So, so there is evidence everywhere we look. I could go. I could go through. You know, individual. Um, uh, World organization, for example, the WHO, the mm-hmm. WHO, the World Health yep. Organization, others, who are just uh, all they want to do is to make everybody come into conformity with what they believe is world saving, um, their world saving philosophies and ideologies, and um, and of course this is uh, this is Satan's way of doing things, and uh, so I, that's what I would tell them. I, I would try to go by it point for point to the point they would listen. I haven't found many people who will sit down. and and listen to what you have to say. Yeah, sadly, I mean, when we think about uh, historically, even in the 20th century, 
the crisis of the First World War led to the League of Nations. The crisis mm -hmm. of the Second World War led to the establishment of the United Nations. And so as we as we continue to to see from really 1945 on that what I see is this is the first time really in uh, – modern history, at least in my life, where there's been such, there's always been that global element, mm -hmm. but now it's becoming way more personal in in seeing the sovereignty of nations uh, eroded or removed. Uh, attacked, you know, yeah, yeah. The latest thing with the WHO and and coming up with whether it's digital passports uh, for, for vaccines or just digital passports in general, mm -hmm. IDs, uh, the, the, the encouragement to have uh, worldwide global protocols for any sort of future pandemic being force fed in through and over all national governments. I mean, this is globalism. The drive Th that's for just digital, the medical. The yeah. drive for, for digital currency. Mm -hmm. All of this thing, that, that that's setting the stage for Revelation 13 verses 16 through 18 and the mark of the beast, I believe. Uh, is this drive toward digital, you know, uh, actually in, in effect, um, economic transfer? Um, Monetary economic transfer mm -hmm. of uh, and doing away with all, you know, currency billing, current bills and yep. coins, and um, this is all part of it of the new world order that uh, you can point to, uh, trying to uh, to bring us all into uh, one world arrangement. Yeah, and and what you guys did in the book, I mean, when we talk about globalism, we're talking about globalism through politics, uh, through economics, what you just mentioned, you know, whether it's the, the digital, uh, digital currency, or just a maybe a, a one world uh, point of currency. Uh, and then we also have technology, uh, technology is being integrated around the world on a global scale. Uh, we have global religion or global ecumenical ideas and thinking mm -hmm. that anything goes except for Christianity. That's right. <laughs> and then of course, you have global censorship to me through all of the mediums that you have that that's been tremendous mm -hmm. uh you already see it in certain pockets china and others but we, we're coming to see it in america of all places but you know uh, you know terry the the book you guys have done here has been great and we're going to take a little break here and uh when we come back uh, i'm going to switch spots here with gary because i know gary wants to spend some time talking with you as well mm -hmm. so just hang on and we'll be right back <laughs> 